Hi everyone, Teddy Baldessar with teddybaldessar.com. In this video, we're looking at a watch from Bulova with the Bulova Devil Diver Orange at 41 millimeters. So in this video and on this channel, we cover watches available for purchase on our website, teddybaldessar.com. So in this video, full in-depth review at the end, final points of consideration. Also throughout this video, if you have any further questions, check out the link in the description to the product page where you can purchase a watch, learn more, as well as book a time with one of our dedicated watch specialists as well. But guys, let's jump into the video, take a closer look at this watch. Back in the early 1960s at the dawn of recreational dive watches, Bulova introduced their infamous oceanographer. It wasn't a watch that was necessarily a record-breaking dive watch, nor was it designed or marketed for hardcore divers. Instead, it decided to market its water-resistant capabilities not in meters, but in feet. Of course, this number has very specific symbolism, and the oceanographer took on the moniker the Bulova Devil Diver. Over the past couple of years, Bulova has reissued both a 44 millimeter option and now a 41 millimeter tribute piece that captures the essence of the original controversial dive watch. How has Bulova done? Well, the devil is in the details, so let's take a closer look. Taking a closer look at this watch on the wrist, we have a case that measures 40 millimeters across when using our calipers here, even though this is marketed as a 41. It's 14.5 millimeters thick, also a lot of that coming from that double dome crystal, and 45 millimeters from lug to lug. These dimensions paired with the vintage case shape gives this watch a compact wearing experience that feels closer to that of a 39 millimeter case. And with this, I think it's an ideal dive watch for those with medium to small wrists, but pretty much anybody out there and talking about just mass appeal. It is different in regards to those broad lugs that is being showcased on this piece, but still very versatile in terms of the size. And I think this is much more wearable compared to the 44 millimeter version. While the watch may appear fairly thick, it's actually quite balanced. And that's largely due to the way that the case extends out past the bezel ever so slightly on both sides, preventing the case from being top heavy. On the right side of the case at the three o'clock sits the sign screw down crown slightly recessed into that case. It operates in typical fashion, aiding the piece with 200 meters of water resistance or more appropriately 666 feet. Engaging the crown is straightforward as you'd imagine the first position to hand wind the movement, pull to the second position to advance that day with the date. And then at the farthest pulled out point, you then can go ahead and adjust the time. The case is almost entirely polished with only a small section of brush applied to the bezel underneath the groove coin edging. The lugs are 19 millimeters wide and hold a soft and textured silicone rubber strap fitted with a pin buckle sign with the bull of a logo. Grooves on the underside of the strap enhance wearability, allowing the skin to breathe a bit more underneath. There are also good sized notches that provide access to the spring bars to swap out the strap if you do wanna throw it on another strap. This is again, odd number lug width, so that is gonna be one probably point you're going to have to dock here in terms of versatility. Uh, but given this one is going to be an orange dial, I don't think it's going to have the same amount of flexibility as some other devil divers out there. But still, I think you can have some good fun maybe putting on a pretty muted color NATO strap. Sliding back up to the front of the case, we are met with a very colorful bezel and dial. In proper dive watch styling, the bezel rotates unidirectionally at 120 clicks, feeling solid but not overly tight. There is a little bit of lateral play in the reverse direction, but overall the bezel feels good when engaging it. A black inner ring with a vivid safety orange 15 second section is well proportioned relative to the dial and also is easy to read. And is capped off with the luminous triangle at the 12 o'clock. The insert is covered in glass, giving it a nice silky smooth finish elevating the overall appearance. Providing a clear and unobstructed view of the dial and further adding to the vintage flare is a double dome sapphire crystal treated with anti-reflective coating on the underside. Below we find more of this vibrant safety orange dial that absolutely pops, particularly against the black of the dial and the rubber strap. This is definitely the kind of dial that is going to draw some attention and frankly, the website photos and just general press photos don't do it justice. It truly does pop. As with the original oceanographer reissued, this dial stays true to the original piece with the use of loom filled cylindrical hour markers, which are secured to the dial with prong style setting from a steel base, which then is applied to that dial. At three o'clock, we have a frame date window with a date wheel set beneath it. Its readability is enhanced slightly by the rectangular cyclops, which is applied to the underside of the crystal. And although the magnification isn't that extreme, 
it does its job and I like how it doesn't add any additional just protruding elements to that crystal as well. As we work our way around the rest of the dial, we have a black crosshair design through the middle in black print, along with a minute track just to the inside of the hour markers. The applied bowl of the logo sits below the 12 o'clock marker with the oceanographer reference below that. At the six o'clock, there is more text referencing the automatic movement and paying further homage to the original Devil Diver with the printing of snorkel and the infamous 666 feet designation. Short and stocky hour minute hands filled with loom are found at the center and they are paired with a thin lollipop sweep second hand. The minute and second hand move along the inside of that interior minute track, which highlights some of the visual aspects that seemingly scaled down the overall size I alluded to at the beginning of this video. The loom I would say is adequate, but not the best in the category, say from the likes of other citizen group brands or from the likes of Seiko, but it does glow with bright yellowish green across all the treated elements. Turning the Devil Diver over, we have a solid screw down case back with a largely open and unmarked surface that provides plenty of space for custom engraving, but beneath that lines the automatic 821D caliber provided by Miyota, which is owned by the same company as Bulova, the Citizen Watch Company. If there is any serious difference between the original Oceanographer and this reissued series, it's the change from Swiss movements to Japanese in the variety here, which has perhaps turned off some hardcore enthusiasts, but from a strategic manufacturing point of view, this does make some sense given the connections of Citizen Watch Group to the Miyota brand. But now let's get into the details about this movement a bit more. So this is a three hertz movement, 21,600 vibrations per hour, has a 42 hour power reserve approximately, and this particular version does not feature hacking, which is a bit, I would say, unfortunate because many of the entry-level Bulova models, even when using these eight series calibers, still upgrade these movements to feature hacking function. Look at their Bulova hack watches. Nothing is wrong with these movements. I think the hacking feature is something that is going to be missing. When you're talking about this price range of where this retails at though, this is getting into a range where you can start seeing a lot of Swiss movements perhaps starting to come into the fold. This might be a little bit competitive for some of those if you're not dealing with the Swatch group, but still very much possible. And then in addition to that, you're definitely going to be seeing quite a bit of 9000 series Miyota calibers. And I think that is the number one challenge with this piece. Everything else about this watch I think is just fantastic and you're getting a lot from the finishing perspective, the interesting looks from the dial, the use of that Cyclops, that pop of color with the orange. This is a very well done watch, but at the movement, this is where it becomes a bit more challenging and I think a little bit less straightforward because this is a movement that pretty much is the entry level option when it comes to Miyota and there's no upgrades when it comes to hacking. And I wouldn't be as hard on this watch if it wasn't for the fact that Bulova has the connections within the Citizen Watch Group to get more priority on Miyota movements. But with the movement chosen here, it is going to create some additional challenges given the fact that these movements can be found in watches sub $300. That said, apart from the true enthusiast perspective on things, these are still reliable movements. You're not necessarily making a sacrifice for that. These are going to tick, they're reliable, they've been time tested. Some of the best entry level mechanical movements you're gonna find on the entire market. But now to wrap this one up and just general thoughts, points of consideration when looking at this piece. Looking at the original Devil Diver, or at least the initial reissue release of 44 millimeters, this is going to be much more wearable. And I know many people out there that were just requesting something of this sizing, they love the style. This is going to answer that call. They did a great job with fitting in the different proportions while still not really making a compromise in any way and losing the plot of what this watch was supposed to represent. In addition, the finishing on this piece is actually quite good from the case perspective. You put this up against any Seiko Prospects watches, this is gonna hold up really well, if not exceed many of what they are doing. I think really at the end of the day, the number one downsides of this watch are gonna be the 19 millimeter lug width. When looking for a dive watch, I like versatility, not a dress watch where you're probably just trying to go for maybe one leather strap that you could just pair with the thing for life because you're using it for formal situations. This is a watch that should be worn in a lot of different environments. And I like just having some versatility with an even number lug width. And then the other thing is going to be the movement. I don't think it's a deal breaker by any means, but I would just challenge Bulova in the future as somebody who really is a huge proponent of this brand and wants them to continue to grow. And I love the direction they're headed, kind of really putting a lot of priority on these vintage style reissues to do a little bit more from the movement perspective, maybe looking at some different Miyota calibers, upgrading hacking when necessary, if you are gonna use these eight series movements and just trying to deliver the best product possible uh, from the movement perspective, because enthusiasts do care about those little types of details. Is that necessarily fair? 
I'll leave that up to the audience just to determine, but I think it's probably the two points of criticism that I would see. But otherwise, I really do like this watch. It's a cool change of pace from many of the dive watches that are so copy paste in this price range. This one has history behind it. It's got a pop of color that will certainly draw some attention. And from a design perspective, this one stands on its own as one of these really interesting dive watches to look in the sub $1,000 range. All right, guys, well, thank you again so much for watching. If you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. That really does help out the channel, and I would appreciate it. Also, if you're in the market for this watch, check it out on teddybaldestar.com, full authorized dealer of all the brands that we carry, quick and fast fulfillment, dedicated customer support. We also offer a full factory warranty for all the products that we offer. So if something goes wrong, you're not having to pay the bill for it, and that can get expensive. Also, we offer price match. So if you see one of our watches for cheaper at another authorized dealer, fill out the form, we'll get in touch with you. And finally, nine out of every $10 that we generate goes right back in the content that we're creating here, as well as on our main channel, helping to foster up a new generation of watch enthusiasts in the process. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon.